So in the UK, it's on the secondary school system, but it's not done very well. Only 45% of schools do that. Mm. Uh, but it turns out that our money... It's more than I thought, actually. 45% have financial education on the curriculum. Well, it's meant to be compulsory, so it oh, should okay. be 100%. Right, so, uh, 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 but it turns out that our money-saving habits are formed by the age of seven. Uh, so basic concepts around delayed gratification, around budgeting, uh, th these are all habits. Uh, uh, you probably heard of the marshmallow uh, test that was done in the 1960s at, around delayed gratification. You give a oh, child a marshmallow uh, and you ask them to wait and you say if you wait you can have two uh, and how many are able to do that. It turns out that delayed gratification uh, is a great predictor of success in life but also around uh, managing money. So yes, we'd love to see financial education on the primary school That'd syllabus. Be mad, really, isn't it? <laughs> is, is technology making people more financially literate or less? Because the reason I ask is Nowadays, you can download apps, these challenger banks, for example, and a lot of uh, the things perhaps you'd typically go to, to a branch bank and get explained about pensions, etc., and many other things, mortgages, are actually just built into this app and gamified. And, and they're so easy to do, and, and it's so easy to invest in things nowadays on these apps. So are people just doing And it's so easy via the apps, it's gamified. <clears throat> do people actually understand what's going on with a lot of the new technology? So I think uh, there's technology and there's gamification. Gamification is really this idea that you can teach uh, in a multidisciplinary way. So I'm all about gamification, whether it's digital or not is a, a separate point. Uh, there are some great pocket money apps. I mean, the best thing you can do as a parent is engage uh, with your children from a young age, talk to them about money, give them pocket money, give them chores. Uh, you know, I, I know one guy who sets an, a weekly interest rate at his home uh, for pocket money and can have a conversation uh, with their kids what's, about what's that. What's the rate of interest? Uh, well, I think he varies it by the kids to, uh, to, to affect the supply and demand of money in his household. So, uh, uh, enough about Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I hate to be the pessimist around the table here, but it, but it seems to me there are a couple of issues. Um, <clears throat> one is um, that people come to financial education when it becomes relevant in their lives. Like our audience, they are smart, intelligent, they probably save a lot and they want to invest their windfall from a successful career or, or whatever they've been doing. People tend not to be too interested if they don't have two sticks to rub together. And the second thing is um, the issue of moral hazard. Since the financial crisis, we've cultivated this idea that the state will look after you, what, wherever you are financially. Um, it's no wonder that in, a, in America people become a lot smarter about managing their 401ks very quickly because they do understand that there is no safety net if things go wrong. I mean, are, are these, you know, one wouldn't want to see more people on the streets and more people having financial pain, but in some way that's a great motivator. But so, well, so I agree with you about the safety net point, and I think you know, the, the, the why is about that shifting financial responsibility onto us as individuals. Uh, I think on the who, why wouldn't we teach all of our kids this stuff? This is not a... We teach our kids lots of things, and most of it goes out of their heads the minute they go into the real world of uh, work, because it's irrelevant. I mean, how many times so, do you money, go back to money Boyle's isn't Law? Irrelevant, Robert, no. what, what, is the, what is the rule surrounding gases in a vacuum? Do you remember? I don't remember. No, of course, because but, it's irrelevant to your so, day-to-day -day so, life. And unless so you have the kind of lifestyle where financial education is critical day in, day out, I mean, I believe in what you're offering, I want children to have more education, but the reality is they'd rather tune into Love Island. So money is relevant, uh, and what we've been able to show is that actually we're doing a project at the moment in Red Start to demonstrate that teaching children financial education improves their key stage two math scores, because you're absolutely right. I can't remember my A-level maths and my, my stat, well I can remember my stats because I need it for work, but uh, the, the, the point being is that money is relevant. Kids do want to buy stuff. They are buying stuff. Yeah. Teenage levels of debt are higher than ever. Uh, you can get store cards at the age of 18. So money is a relevant topic and we need to make it more relevant. And it turns out, early evidence suggests, that teaching children financial education actually improves math scores because it puts it into context, which is your, which is your point. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.